congratulations for your short film, The Family Circus. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Hey, not a problem. Hey, more of a congratulations is this is being showcased at Sundance Film Festival. In fact, it's a return um, for yourself to the Sundance Film Festival. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel great. You know, um, the I, I had a short film play there in 2017. So, um, yeah, it's just great to be back, uh, especially this being the first uh, in-person festival since the pandemic. And, uh, yeah, you know, as a filmmaker, Sundance is really, you know, a main target you're aiming for. So, so to be part of it and just be supported by the festival, it's a great feeling. Wow, that that is great to hear, and and you you will be there physically yourself uh, this year too. Right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is great. So let, let's ask that obvious question we always ask: is where the original idea came from for the family circus? Um, so the original idea uh, it came from. It's loosely based on uh, an experience that I I went through with my own family. Um, and yeah, I decided to just kind of take elements from that and from my own um, upbringing and, and put them into this short film and really just try to make something very uh, tense and suspenseful. Um, and yeah, hopefully I succeeded in doing so. Well, I, I hope I hope that original experience wasn't as uh, intense as uh, your short film. <laughs> um. No, you know, I, I obviously took some creative liberties with uh, the short, but um, yeah, it, it's it's definitely a a a um, a more a more intense and amped up version of of uh, you know what really happened. Great. So, um, tell us about uh, keeping this uh, sort of like your experience. I understand it's a multiracial family, and that that's where you you have to. Yeah, so my mom is uh, Vietnamese. She's uh, she came to this country in 1975 from Vietnam, and uh, she met my father, and they uh, settled in a small town in Pennsylvania. And um, you know, it, it hasn't been till you know somewhat recently where I was able to reflect on just my experiences growing up in a small town in Pennsylvania with a multiracial family and just kind of pinpoint, you know, the differences that I must have had from just a normal uh, family in, in, in that area. Um, and yeah, just kind of wanted to portray some of the uh, specific things that I've felt uh, throughout my life and, and just kind of showcase, uh, yeah, what, what, what it was like for our family and my mother specifically. Now, one one of the things that uh, you know, you it seems like you wanted to portray is sort of a sort of like a the blending of a multiracial family that is just like any other family, except we we also speak uh, you know another language at the same time. Exactly, I, I think that that was a huge um, part of the movie, just showing that um, it didn't need to be so much about. Uh, our identity itself that wasn't what was driving the film it was more that it was just hopefully something anyone from a family can relate to of just the dynamics between father son mother son brother um and that we all kind of share similar uh feelings towards one another and, and experience things in the same way and and, and any family under uh stress uh, kind of responds in funny and unique ways. Um, but there was just this underlying element of having the difference being that, uh, yeah, we're half Vietnamese. Now, of course, you know, the Vietnamese language was uh, portrayed um, by, you know, between the mother and, and son um, speaking to each other. Um, but but you didn't have the, you know, like, I, I want to say, the you know, like a lot of parents, like um, having like a white father now these days, they do speak a little or understand. Was that was was that intentional that you didn't want him to say anything in Vietnamese, or is that or is that how your father your father was growing up? Um, yeah, that that's very much part of how I was brought up. So when my mother came to this country, um, she she didn't really she she didn't teach us the language um she didn't 
because of the circumstances that she was coming from a war torn country and, and her experiences there were not the most pleasant. So when she came to the United States, she really wanted to start fresh and have an American family. Um, so there was this part of me uh, that would hear the language, but I, I, I never understood what was being said. Um, but I, 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 at the same time, I got the I got the gist of it, you know. Um, so I kind of wanted to show that in the film that though the characters may not know the words that are coming out of her mouth, they know what she, the emotion that that's. Uh, being put across and uh, just the power of that. Now, growing up in rural uh, Pennsylvania, you know, we always get the sort of like this, uh, this image of what rural, you know, this rural culture is actually like. And I think it, it kind of portrays in the police officer itself. Um, because it, it's almost like sort of like the unintentional uh, misunderstandings of uh, of culture uh, of other people. Could you talk talk about the character, the police officer being played by uh, Michael Ironside on how you want to, you know, present that in your short film? Sure. So, um, yeah, you're you're exactly right that um, he he kind of embodies a a small town. Uh, mentality, but I I also don't want to be judgmental in that and and be like oh he he is uh, an uncultured or uncaring person, but that it, so people with different backgrounds uh, sometimes just don't understand one another. And the movie is, is about these misunderstandings and how um, they can be overcome, and that people you know, at their core do generally understand just the humanity of, of one another. So even though they're from very different backgrounds um, and he, he, you know, th there's a point in the movie where, where he, he mistakes the mother's identity for being Chinese and uh, for the son, that, that's an incredibly offensive thing uh that he's said but for the mother she, she she has the ability to see beyond that that he doesn't mean any harm by it that he just doesn't know any better and it it kind of represents to me the 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 the, the kind of generational divide um where i think uh some people who who immigrated to this country um they want to blend in that they 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 want to to be a part of the culture and then maybe some of the younger like first generation uh kids of, of those people they really want to be recognized um for their culture for their heritage and the tension that 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 sometimes arises from that so it's yeah different points of view um creating this misunderstanding and hopefully you know the mother can kind of bridge all these divides absolutely i i, ca I caught all that uh, during your sh your short obviously um tell us about balancing the dark humor and drama into something like this i know you don't have a lot of time because it's a short film but uh but you have to accomplish that in in that 15 minutes of yours Right. So that all comes from, yeah, just the, the writing stage, really trying to to make sure uh, the dialogue seems real, seems lived in, seems like it's the way a family talks to one another, that it's they're not just kind of spouting exposition. So it's um, trying trying to make their relationships real right off the bat, just in, in how they talk to each other. And I think as far as bringing out the humor, it, it for me, intense situations, the humor always arises just because people are having knee-jerk reactions and, and their, their emotions are really at a higher level. So um, I think a lot of funny behavior comes from, from those types of situations. And just when you're creating something tense, um, you know, I wanted the film to kind of breathe and, 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 and you know, you, you release the tension with a laugh and then kind of build it back up. And it, it's that constant uh, push and pull. Now, um, why the choice of the time as a Christmas uh, for you? Was that was that basically is because that your story revolved around like sort of like a 
middle of the night accident, which could be could happen at any time of the year, or is it because it it happened in quasi in your life back then around the same time? Yeah, it actually happened during the Christmas holiday. Um, and I think that was what stuck with me so much that it is this time for family to come together and 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 celebrate one another, celebrate the holidays. So to have an incident take place during that time, you know, it, it adds a, a, a new layer and dimension to it all. And it was a great way to tie in the, the Christmas lights as a motif. Yeah, that is true. So, so I'm curious, did it, was this filmed in um, Pennsylvania or you had to find some other wintry weather uh, location itself? Well, I originally wanted to shoot it in Pennsylvania at my parents' house and kind of really just make it as, um, you know, almost a recreation of, of, of how things transpired. But um, by the time we got everything into place, it was already springtime. So we shot it here in Los Angeles and had to to fake uh, winter time and snow in Pasadena. <laughs> well, you you fooled me. I you know well, I guess uh, it is nighttime and I you, you we couldn't see the rest of Pasadena in the background. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Then then that's a win for me for sure. <laughs> that's great. Um, and one, one more thing uh, before I forget, talk about the cast that you actually got. I, I know, uh, I mean, I had I had to take a second glance to uh, realize that was Michael Ironside as the uh, as the police officer um, it, um, himself, and then and then the mother. Um, I just saw her, Elisa, you know, in in another movie just just this past week. So. <laughs> Yeah. Talk about the cat wonderful cast you have on. So the cast, yeah, is is really incredible. Um, and you know, there's a saying that uh 90% of directing is just casting well. So we really put a lot of energy into finding the right people. And um, you know, we had a lot of help from a woman named Jess Vu from uh an organization called CAPE, who was very instrumental in finding um Vietnamese actors and actresses and half Vietnamese actors that could play brothers. So it was really, you know, going into it, we're, it was so specific um, that I thought it would be somewhat difficult to find the right people. But I think, you know, the actors are out there. It's just um, they they just need the, the, the opportunities. And I was, I was happy to just kind of bring everyone in. And yeah, their performances are just incredible. Like they, they really, um, what was really special about it is I think some of the younger, the, the half white, half Vietnamese actors who are playing brothers shared very similar experiences of just growing up, uh, you know, to myself. So we were able to connect on that level. And I think it just really felt real to, to them. And yeah, they're just a, a really talented bunch. And to have Ironside in it was amazing. I mean, just to have an actor of, of, of his caliber um, responding to the material and coming in and, and just working with everyone. It was great. Terrific. And, and I'm, I'm actually curious because I, I, I didn't see your previous short film, but um, do you, are, are you the type of director that likes to, you know, keep sort of like the, the, like a, like a certain type of theme and culture of like Vietnamese into your, into your films, or is this just sort of like the, the one and one, one time thing um, for you for this. I'll say it's the first time. Um, I, you know, I, and and hopefully not the last. This was definitely a, a departure from the last film I made, which was more of like commentary on uh, internet culture uh, at large. Um, so this was, yeah, just very personal. I, I wanted to make something that was very meaningful to to me, and and you know, take some time to reflect on my experiences, and and basically make an ode to my own family and my love for them. Great. So, what's up next for you then, Andrew? Uh, I'm currently uh, editing a television show that I was able to direct uh, some episodes for. And uh, yeah, just really excited to get this out to Sundance. And we uh, just uh, got the news that the film was accepted to South by Southwest as well. So uh, yeah, just getting this movie out to the world and um, hopefully getting some other projects of mine off the ground. That is that is excellent to hear. Well, once again, congratulations for your short film, The Family Circus. 
um, it's a wonderful, uh, you know, fam family uh, short film there. And it's been a pleasure speaking to you, Andrew. Hopefully we get to do this again. Great. Thanks, Gig. It was great.